to turn to 1 Timothy and chapter 4. We'll be looking at a good number of scriptures, so get your fingers nimble this morning. Mm. 1 Timothy and chapter 4. Paul, writing this letter to encourage Timothy in ministry of the Word of God. And verse 13, he says, Until I come, give attention to the reading of Scripture. Give attention to the reading of Scripture. To exhortation and teaching, do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was bestowed upon you through prophetic utterance and the laying on of hands by the presbytery. Take pains with these things. Meditate in these things. Be absorbed in them. Be in them. So that your progress may be evident to all. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things. For as you do this, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those <coughs> who hear you. Paul is encouraging this young man to continue in the word, to be absorbed in the scriptures, to meditate, to take pens with the scriptures, and to persevere in the reading of the Word of God. Dear friends, we need to persevere in the reading of the Word of God. We need to be diligent. We need to be absorbed in it. We need to give close attention. Make pens. We need to meditate upon the Word of God. We all know it, <clears throat> but we need to encourage one another to press on, because that's how we grow, dear friends. That's how we move on in our walk with Jesus. That is the thing that God has given us. Let's turn to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Oh, sorry, let's turn to Acts. In chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, and I just have to skip, skip one or two scriptures I think. Acts chapter 4, the word of God is God breathed, Amen. it is inspired of God. The Holy Spirit inspired the scriptures, amen? amen. We need to be fully convinced of that. It is the Word of God. And the church recognized it. We should recognize it. The book that we have before us, these 66 books, are the inspired Word of God. They are God-breathed. And the early church here in Acts chapter 4, let's read verse 24. When they heard this, they lifted their voices they were told to speak no more in the name of Jesus. There was an attempt by the evil one to shut up the word of God. That's what he wants to do, dear friends. He wants to shut up the word of God. He wants to distract you. He wants to keep you from the word of God. And we need to be diligent. We need to persevere in the word of God. When they heard this, they lifted their voices to God with one accord and said, O Lord, it is Thou who didst make the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. He's the creator, isn't he? All things were made by him and for him. He is before all things. And he is Lord. Who? By the Holy Spirit, 
Through the mouth of our father David thy servant did say, Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples devise a vain thing? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. How do the early church see the scriptures? David spoke, they're quoting the Psalms. And what do they say? By the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our father David, you said. There was a recognition that the scriptures were men moved by the Holy Spirit speaking the words of God. I hope this morning that you are fully convinced that the book that we have before us is given by inspiration of God, that men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke the words of God, recorded for us the words of God. They were the pen, but God was the writer. Men moved by the Holy Spirit. David, thy servant, moved by the Holy Spirit, did say, this word is inspired by God. It is God-breathed and it is profitable for us. Mm -hmm. It's going to do us good, dear friends. Amen? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Second Samuel, verse 23. Did, did David know that that's what was happening? Did the men moved by the Holy Spirit know that they were being moved by the Holy Spirit? 2 Samuel chapter 23, page 542. Reading verse 1. Now these are the last words of David. David the son of Jesse declares the man who was raised on high declares the anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel, the Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. David knew he was moved by the Spirit of God to speak forth the words of God. Dear friends, these men didn't just by accident, start writing down a book, they knew that they were moved by the Holy Spirit to speak the words of God. They were being stirred. They were being used to give us the scriptures, dear friends. And the church recognized it. We need to recognize it. This is the word of God. Second Peter and chapter 1. Page 2017, 2 Peter chapter 1. We need to understand what our authority is. We share the word of God and it is just that, the word of God. When we say the Bible says that is our authority, because men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke the words of God. It is God's word. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. No prophecy was ever made by an act of human will. But men, moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. They were men, moved by the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the words of God. They recorded them for us. What we have which is written is the inspired word of God. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. Men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke the words of God. God didn't give us 67 books or 60 books. He knew what he was doing. And what we have is all that God has for us. That we should be adequate. That we should be fully equipped. And the simple question is, are we taking pens? Are we persevering 
in reading the scriptures? Are we giving close attention to the reading of the scriptures? Are we reading our Bibles? Are we fading upon the word of God that God has given us? I want to look at a few reasons why we should. First of all, it is the source of salvation. James chapter 1, page 1998. It is our deliverance, dear friends, the word of God. When the enemy came to tempt the Lord Jesus, what was his deliverance? What did he use? He took the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. James chapter 1 verse 21 says, Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness in humility, receive the Word implanted, the engrafted Word, which is able to do what? It is able to save your souls. S.O.S. We put out an SOS. What do we need? We need the Word of God. When we are tempted, when we are attacked, when we are led astray in any kind of way, when we are detracted, we need to take the sword of the Spirit. Let the Word of God be upon your lips. Meditate upon it. Mm -hmm. Take the sword of the Spirit and use it, dear friends. It is the source of our deliverance. 1 Peter chapter 1. How do we get saved even? What can we do for our children that they might get saved? Or our grandchildren? 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22 says, Since you have, in obedience to the truth, purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren. Fervently love one another from the heart. For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and abiding Word of God. How were you saved? <coughs> through the living and abiding Word of God. The sower went out to sow, and what did he sow? The seed. The seed is the Word of God. Dear friends, we need to sow the Word of God. We need to know the Scriptures. We need to share the Scriptures. We need to sow the Scriptures into the hearts of our children and of our grandchildren, of the people that we work with, of those around us. We need to sow the imperishable Word of God. Now, um, I don't know where I heard it, but I, I'm pretty sure it's true. There is a tree somewhere in Australia. There's probably trees like it elsewhere. But <clears throat> it, it can get burned down, this tree. Mm. The whole area can be completely devastated by fire, uh, etc. But... This tree has these kind of nut things with the seed in them. And, and even though the whole area can be totally devastated by fire, guess what survives? Mm -hmm. An imperishable seed, dear friends. An imperishable seed. It can sit there for years. But it's there because it's an imperishable seed. And that imperishable seed one day can get some water and some nutrients uh, and, and, and it can germinate. And dear friends, that's the Word of God. We need to sow the Word of God in people's hearts. We never know, dear friends, when God is going to stir them. We need to plant the imperishable seed of the Word of God. The grass withers, the flower fades, but... The Word of God abides forever. It is imperishable seed. So sow it. Sow it into the hearts of children wherever you can. You might not see anything sprout this year or next year or for several years to come. But it's imperishable seed. And in that seed 
is the capacity for people to be saved. Praise God. So keep sowing and keep praying. 2 Timothy chapter 3 on this theme. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. Paul says to Timothy, from childhood, from being a little baby, even in the womb, mm -hmm. you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. When did he start hearing the word of God? As a baby. As a baby. If you've had the blessing of growing up in a household with the word of God, then praise God. Praise God that you've had the sacred writings, even from your mother's womb. And the Word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it can pierce. It can touch lives. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians and chapter 3. Page 1896. Galatians 3 and verse 23. It says... But before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, being shut up to faith, which was later to be revealed. Therefore, the law has become our tutor, our schoolmaster, to lead us to Christ. It's like a custodian. It's that thing that's constantly telling you, you're a naughty boy, or a naughty girl even. <clears throat> You say, what a miserable custodian, always telling me that I'm doing wrong, mm. Mm? that I'm falling short. Yeah, but it's a custodian which will lead you to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Praise God if you grew up with the Scriptures. Praise God if you were drummed in the Ten Commandments. Praise God if you were made to read your Bible. Why? Because you will have grown up knowing that you're a miserable sinner who needs a saviour. Amen? Amen? I wasn't, but I wish I had been. What else? It's the word of God which will judge men and women. It's the word of God which will judge men and women. Turn to John chapter 12, page 1739. John 12 and verse 46. I have come as light into the world that everyone who believes in me may not remain in darkness. The light shone into the darkness, but men love darkness because they're Deeds were evil, they don't come to the light, lest their deeds be reproved. But Jesus says, I've come as light into the world that everyone who believes in me may not remain in darkness. Mm. And if anyone hears my sayings and does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He didn't come to condemn us. Why? Because we're already condemned by the word of God. The word that I speak to him will condemn him. He who rejects me and does not receive my sayings has one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him at the last day. We're accountable for what we hear of the word of God. To him whom much is given, much more is expected. Jesus rebuked the towns around the Galilee. Woe to you, Capernaum. Woe to you, Bethsaida. It'll be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for you. 
The very words that we have heard, all the scriptures that we've heard in our lives, all the times that God has spoken to us, will judge us on the day of judgment. If we don't act upon them, the word of God, dear friends, judges people. And people say, you're judging me. Well, if I'm sharing the word of God, it's the word of God judging you. I don't judge you. The word of God will judge you on the day of judgment. The words that you've heard will judge you on the day of judgment. That which you have heard and not responded to will judge you on the day of judgment. Before that great white throne, books will be opened. And another book, which is the book of life. And anyone whose name is not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire, will be judged according to his deeds. And everything that men and women know of the word of God and the nature of God through creation will be laid out on the day of judgment. And they'll be held to account by what they have known. Mm. And condemned and judged by it. The words that I speak to you will judge you. If you heard the word of God, if you don't respond to it, if you don't turn and repent, the very words that you've heard will judge you on the day of judgment. The words that I speak. 1 John chapter 2, page 2024. First epistle of John. Verse 3 says, By this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. What is one of the evidences that we are saved? When we hear the word of God, something within us, the Holy Spirit within us, stirs us to act upon it. We need to do something about this. The very one who breathed, who moved men to record the word of God, who if he lives within us, will stir us up to do something about what we hear, what we read, if we are saved. The word of God, dear friends, it saves us or it will judge us. It saves us or it will judge us. What else? It's life to us. It's life and revelation by the Holy Spirit. Turn to John chapter 14, page 1743. <coughs> Jesus said he'd give another helper, another helper, another one like him, the same in nature and attributes. John 14, 26, page 1743. But the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you what? All things. And bring to your remembrance what? All that I said to you. What does the Holy Spirit bring to remembrance? Well, he might help you remember what you went into hell this for. If you've forgotten, he's quite capable of it. But primarily, the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance what God has spoken to us. He will bring to remembrance the Word of God. Dear friends, we need to read it. We need to try and memorize it. We need to meditate upon it, that the Holy Spirit can bring it to our remembrance. We put it in. He brings it up. And we speak it out. Psalm 119. We had to go there, don't we? <laughs> At least once. Psalm 119. Page 985. 
And verse 18, open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from thy law. The Holy Spirit, dear friends, opens up the word of God to us. That we might behold wonderful things from God's law. It is the source of our revelation by the Holy Spirit. The Word of God. The Word of God. Turn to the book of Ezekiel. Page 1322, the book of Ezekiel. Read the first couple of verses of chapter 2. He said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet that I may speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. God says, stand on your feet. And then the Spirit of God stands him up. Who did the standing? And then he heard the Lord speaking to him. God says, read my word. God says, Give attention to it. God says, let the words of God not depart from our mouths. And when we do it, dear friends, the Spirit of God enables us. When we set our hearts and our will, remember, spirit, soul and body, God does not bypass the soul. He doesn't bypass our will. Chapter 3, he said to me, son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he fed me. We have our part, God has his part. We open our mouths. We put aside time to read our Bibles. We, through the day, call to mind something of the Word of God mm. and start to meditate upon it, and the Spirit of God ministers it to our hearts. We have our part, God has His part. Turn to Isaiah in chapter 50. Page 1168, Isaiah and chapter 50. Verse 4 says, The Lord God has given me the tongue of disciples, that I may know how to sustain the weary one with a word. How? He awakens me when? Morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. Dear friends, if you'll get up in the morning and get your Bible out, guess what? God will do the waking up. You don't need a great amount of caffeine. The Spirit of God will stir you up. He will awaken you to hear the Word of God. He will minister the Word of God to you. He'll bring life to you through His precious Word. He awakens me morning by morning. Turn to Jeremiah in chapter 15. Jeremiah had a tough time, didn't he? Yes, he did. Probably went through a lot more than you or I will go through. And so it's good to know what saw him through. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16 says, Thy words were found, and I, I ate them. And thy words became for me a joy 
and the delight of my heart, for I have been called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Thy words were found, and I ate them, and they became what? Joy, and the delight of my heart. It's a remarkable scripture when you read the book of Jeremiah, because it's a bit gloom and doom, isn't it? But the very words that God spoke to this man became his joy and his delight. Dear friends, there is life. The words that I speak to you, Jesus said, they are spirit and they are life. Thy word was found, and I ate them. I ate them, and they became to me a joy and a delight. What else can we say about the word of God? It's our source of growth and strength, dear friends. It's our source of growth and strength. If you're not growing, if you're not strong, what do you need? You need the word of God. It's very simple. <coughs> when we see people not growing, when we see people weak, what can we be pretty sure they're not doing? They're not feeding on the Word of God. They're not reading their Bibles. They might tell you that they are, but if they are, then there's something seriously wrong. Peter chapter 2, page 2009, 1 Peter chapter 2, we are born again by the living and abiding word of God, therefore, verse 1, putting aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envy and all slander like newborn babes, long for the pure milk of the word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. How do we grow? By the word of God. What makes us strong? What makes us fit and healthy? The word of of God. Like newborn babes, we should be wailing and screaming and paddying for someone to give us a Bible all the time, several times a day. Wow! Where's my Bible? Like newborn babes longing for pure milk. That's what it's saying. That's how we should be, dear friends. We need food. I'm starving. I'm hungry. Somebody give me a Bible. Somebody give me opportunity to turn aside and to read the Word of God and meditate upon it. Because I'm hungry. And I need to be fed. I need to be built up. I need to be made strong. Acts chapter 20, page 1804. Paul addressing the elders, the overseers. Verse 31 he says, Therefore be on alert, remembering that day and night for a period of three years I did not cease to admonish each one with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of God. His grace, which is able to do what? Build you up. It is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. What is going to build you up? What is going to make you strong? What is going to make you grow in the Lord? The Word of God. And we need to commend ourselves and commit ourselves constantly and regularly to the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 4, page 1909. 
We need it for ourselves and we need to share it with others. We go to the Lord, Lord, give me bread, give me living bread. I've got people all around me who are starving and perishing. We should be like the man going at midnight and banging on the door persistently. We need bread. We've got hungry people. Ephesians 4 and verse 15 says, Speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ. Speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up into him, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is given as head over all things to the church which is his body. The word of God will build us up. Dear friends, what else? It will give us direction. It will give us direction. Turn to Psalm 119, page 981. How does God lead us? Do we need a word from the Lord? Oh, we need the word from the Lord. That's not to say God cannot give words by prophetic revelation, but primarily He guides us and leads us through the Scriptures, through the Word of God. Psalm 119, verse 133, Establish my footsteps in thy word, and do not let any iniquity have dominion over me. Establish my footsteps in thy word. I want to walk according to the word of God. Help me to live according to the word of God. Verse 24. Thy testimonies also are my delight. They are my counsellors. They are my counsellors. You want counsel? You want instruction? Read the word of God. Know the scriptures. They will be your counsellor. Verse 105. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word of God will direct us, dear friends. It will lead us. The commandment is a lamp. And the Torah, the teaching, is a light for reproof. We do what we know God commands us to do. And we constantly feed upon and read the Word of God so that we know the ways of God and so that our path will not go left or right. Mm. We need to know God's ways. Turn to Proverbs and chapter 28. Here's a little warning for us. What if we don't read our Bibles? What if we turn away? What if we neglect the Word of God? And then end up in a mess? Hmm? Proverbs 28 verse 9 says this, He who turns away his ear from listening to the law, the instruction of God, even his prayer is an abomination. You stop listening to God, and guess what? He's going to stop listening to you. 
In fact, when you start calling upon him and crying out to him because your life's a mess, your very prayer is going to be grievous in his ear. You say, that's harsh. Well, it might be harsh, but is it the word of God? Is it the truth? Do parents ever treat their children like that? I've been telling you for two weeks to clean your room. Yeah, but Mum, I want an ice cream. Ah! Shut up! I don't want to hear about your ice creams. Get your room clean. He who turns away his ear from listening to the law of God, even his prayer, even his cry, is an abomination. People who have backslidden, dear friends, people who are afar off, they've given up on reading God's word. They're not bothered. They were never really bothered. They never fed upon the word of God. They didn't long for the pure milk of the word. And then they hit shipwreck. No, God's not done this for me. God's not done that for me. He never hears me, me prayers. Yeah, because they're an abomination to him. I said that to a lady once. It wasn't a good idea. <laughs> He was whinging and moaning about the, whoa, the, the, the awful things and her, and her husband had given up on his faith. He was a Church of England vicar and the, all sorts of things had gone and, 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 and they were praying and God wasn't answering. And I said, do you know the word of God? No, oh, sure, of course I know the word of the Bible. You know what the book of Proverbs says? He who turns away his ear from listening to my word, even his prayer is an abomination. Yeah. You still reading your Bibles? No, 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 we don't. Well, don't expect him to hear your prayer. It's an abomination to him. Mm -hmm. You don't want to listen to him. He's not going to listen to you. Didn't go down well. Mm -hmm. I didn't say it in that tone much. <laughs> I was far more gentle. Believe it or not. <laughs> Proverbs 5. Proverbs chapter 5. Let's read from verse 1. My son, give attention to my wisdom, incline your ear to my understanding, that you may observe discretion. Your lips may reserve knowledge. For the lips of an adulterous drip on it. Smoother than oil is her speech. But in the end, she's bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead, lay hold of Sheol. She does not ponder the way of life. Her ways are unstable. She does not know it. How then, my, now then, my sons, listen to me. And do not depart from my, the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her. Do not go near the door of her house. How do we keep away from the harlot? How do we keep away from the one who deceives and leads astray? We keep ourselves in the word of God, dear friends. We search for wisdom and understanding. We do not depart from the words of his mouth. We listen to his voice. And then we are not led astray. It is our safety net, dear friends. It's our moral compass. Turn to John chapter 15. Just a few more scriptures before we close.
How do we know how we're supposed to live? How do we know the things that we're supposed to do? How do we know what pleases God? <coughs> Jesus says, I am the true vine, my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I spoke to you. There is a cleansing effect of the word of God. The word of God washes us. There is a washing of water with the Word. It cleanses us. It renews us in our minds. It helps us to start thinking the right way. We are totally bombarded, dear friends, in this world with uncleanness and nonsense and rubbish. And we need to regularly feed upon the Word of God and read the Word of God we need to give attention to it. We need to give pens to it because it cleanses us. It washes us. It cleans us out. John 17 and verse 17. The prayer of Jesus for the disciples. Sanctify them in the truth. Set them apart, Lord. Set them apart out of this world. Set them apart in the kingdom of God. In the standing of God. In Christ himself. Sanctify them in the truth. Thy word is truth. How are we going to be set apart? You say, but I'll be different and everyone will laugh at me. Yes, you will. Get used to it. It doesn't get any better when you leave school or anything else. Wait till you get in the workplace. Go work with 40 odd working class men in a sorting office and stand for Christ. Hmm? Amen. You think it's tough in school? Mm -hmm. It gets worse. You go work in the care profession. They're all bananas, different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely bomb mm -hmm. And it's getting worse. And guess what? It's going to get worse stuff. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to keep ourselves set apart to God? Sanctified in the truth, dear friends. Mm. The word of God is what will keep us separate. Psalm 119 and verse 9. Psalm 119 and verse 9. Psalm 119 and verse 9. Page 985. How can a young man keep his ways mm. pure? As a young man, how, how is a young person in this, the most wicked, adulterous, sinful generation? The most perverted, the most unclean, the most wayward, the most dark generation. Dear friends, if Jesus is coming back, that's what this generation must be. The people who sat in darkness saw a great light as it was at the first coming of the Messiah, so it will be at the second coming of the Messiah. There'll be tribulation of man, there will be judgment such as never been. As in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man, when the thoughts and intentions of man's heart were evil continually. This has to be the worst and darkest our most demonically inspired generation if Jesus is coming back soon. And it is different, especially in the Western world. So how can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to thy word. By keeping it according to thy word. 
Live according to the word of God, dear friends. Let the word of God cleanse your mind and your heart. Romans chapter 12. Offer your body a living sacrifice. It's reasonable. It's well pleasing. Present your bodies a living and a holy sacrifice acceptable to God. This is your spiritual service of worship. What does God want? Your body. Everything. And do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What will renew your mind? That you may prove what the will of God is. How will you know what the word of God, what the will of God is? Where do we find the will of God? Dear friends, in his word. How are you going to be transformed in your thinking? How are you going to know what the will of God is until you read the word of God? That you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. You want the devil's best plan for your life? You know what it is? He wants to destroy you and kill you. That's it. The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. The devil wants to rob you of anything good or godly or upright or moral. Anything of value to God. Anything good. He wants to strip it all away. He wants to pervert it. And then what? He wants to destroy and kill you. You want him as your master? Well, until you're born again, he is your master. Your sons of the devil, the God of this world. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. And more abundantly. More abundantly. And the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. You are my sheep. If you do what I say. If you do what I say. Romans chapter 7. <clears throat> Romans chapter 7. And verse 13. Therefore... Did that which is good become a cause of death for me? May it never be. Rather it was sin in order that it might be shown to be sin by effecting my death through that which is good that through the commandment sin might become utterly sinful, exceedingly sinful. The world will belittle sin. The world will glorify sin. The world is twisting good to be evil and evil to be good. And what is the only thing that will get you back to a right way of thinking where sin is utterly sinful? Dear friends, it's the law of God, it's the word of God that makes sin exceedingly sinful. The world will trivialize it. Psalm 119, just two more scriptures. Psalm 119, verse 29, page 986. Verse 29, remove the false way from me. Graciously grant me thy law. I've chosen the faithful way. I've placed thine ordinances before me. What are we going to choose? 
the faithful way. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. He is the word that was made flesh. And I'm going to choose the faithful way. I want to be on the narrow way which leads to life. Even if there's only a few people on there with me. And I've chosen that. I've chosen that way. I've placed thine ordinances before me. Dear friends, the two things go together. We can't say that we've chosen, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I want to be on the narrow way. And then not read the word of God. Because how will you know where to put your steps? How will you know the direction to take? It's the word of God which keeps us in the right direction so that we don't turn aside to the left or to the right, but we keep our footsteps firm. Ephesians chapter 5, one last scripture. Page 1910. Ephesians and chapter 5. Verse 25, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot, or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that she should be holy and blameless. God is preparing a bride for his son, and he wants her cleaned up, he wants her spotless, he wants her blameless, and that's why he has given his word, that we might be set apart, we might be cleansed and washed and ready for the bridegroom to come. Give attention to the reading of Scripture. Persevere in it, dear friends. Mm. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy words became to me the joy and the delight of my heart. May that be true, dear friends, for each and every one of us. God has given us His Word. Men, moved by the Holy Spirit, recorded these words for us. Men were burnt alive, making sure that we had them in a book so that we can read them here today. God's servants, so many have had their blood shed so that we stand here today with the word of God in our hands. May we not neglect it. May we stir ourselves up to give attention to it. May God bless his word to us this morning.